You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, never here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Shelter Burry's Path. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you were up and let's go. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. Give it a little more time. It has only been two days since I found you, and you were healing really well. I'm certain that you will regain your voice soon enough. In a couple more days, we should be able to leave this cave and take you to the... Yes, where exactly? What should I do once he returns to full health? It has become obvious to me that he is someone unique. He could even hold the keys to all the mysteries I thought were hopeless to pursue all this time. Would it really be wise to let him go? He's so small and frail. I could easily, easily imprison him and harvest, for him for, and harvest for samples. With all the knowledge I possess, maybe I can rouse his spirit to finally find out what species he is. He is sentient. He can definitely experience and express the same depth of emotions all other species can. If that is the case, then I know I can put him through anguish strong enough for his spirit to open bear for me. I've done that so many times before, after all. What is one more sacrifice for that giant mountain of corpses? If that could give me tools to help my brothers in some way. I hold a knife in my hand, and a compulsive thought buzzes in my mind. If I can release and consume some of his blood, then I can easily confirm and deny his special nature. Either he is just some rodent or a sorry with a weird inborn corruption, and he holds no value to me, or he is the breakthrough I've been searching for all this time. A growl and plunges the knife's edge deep into the flesh. Warm dark red blood oozes down, and it freezes as soon as it drips down onto the cold stone. Ah! Ah! It is okay. It is fine. Please, forgive me for scaring you. Just fucking stabbed him. I slowly unwedge the knife out of my forearm and drop it onto the ground. Jesus. I feel better now. No more stupid ideas. No more sacrifices. I cannot fall asleep. There's nothing new to me. I do not remember when the last time I had a restful night. Even alone, my mind was always full of voices. However, loneliness is not the issue tonight. The opposite is true. Even though the stranger is not at risk of dying from cold anymore, I still offer to share my warmth with him after the night. That is what his canines do in the cold, after all. He is not a canine, though. I can clearly see and smell his excitement, and what I can imagine is quite an unusual predicament to him. I, in turn, cannot contain my own arousal, either. I keep him my embrace, and as hard as I try to calm myself, I know it is impossible for him to not notice the growth of my loins. The fuck? I gulp. He gulps. We stare at each other. Our lips parted. No, no, do not separate from me! You do not want to get lost again, do you? Just keep walking straight! Somehow I was convinced to not lead my companion back to Morzeburg. He really wanted to keep walking north, and I could not agree to let him go on his own. I decided to help him on this one single trip. I started to feel responsible for this one life. I myself made a quick trip to Morzeburg to restock on food, and by next morning we were ready to set off. I made him promise to stick close to me and make sure we never separate. That went fine for a while. But for the last hour, he has been acting a little weird. He would start to take random turns when we were supposed to simply keep walking forward. Admittedly, that started to irritate me, especially since I myself kept getting confused, and I had to readjust our direction every time I had to walk back for him. It's like now, water time. Mm. <clears throat> oh, that is so good. Mm. Skittles blue raspberry water. It's so easy to get lost in this environment of pure white. Just keep walking forward. How hard can it be, duh dog damn it? Ah, uh, okay. What? What now? What? What now? Do you need a break? Is that why you stop walking? He shakes his head. Look, maybe I misunderstood you, but you wanted to go straight north, right? He nods. Then what is the problem? Why do you keep turning and stopping? Just follow me. We are going north like you wanted. No turns or twists. Just straight as an arrow. North. I've been traversing these tundras for five long years. I know them. I've been looking for something here, too, and I know they're every nook and cranny. You can trust me. What? He points at the snow-covered grounds. I look at our paw prints. A set of big bare feet and smaller shoe prints are pressed in the snow. I do not know what he wants to show me. Then he points at the trails behind us. I cannot notice anything out of the ordinary, but I see that great frustration in his eyes, so I do my best to investigate whatever he tries to show me. There's nothing. But I still try. And it is surprisingly hard. My head hurts and I start feeling nauseous. Like if I am looking at something not meant to be seen or understood by my mind. Then I finally realize it. 
My companion's trail of small shoe prints keeps following a fairly straight line for as, me for as far as my eyes can see. It's been me who kept taking sharp turns all this time. What the hell? An ancient metal temple? Here? Impossible! I've traveled through these lands for all those years. How could I have never found this place? And look at the size of it. All those relics are in perfect condition. This may very well be the greatest discovery in all of recorded history. Look at my companion. He was the one who led me here by hand, keeping me on course whenever my mind tried to force my legs to take another turn. My curiosity in him only grows. Why was he, why was he not affected? What is he thinking now, looking around this mysterious hall of pure steel? A monster? It is unsafe here. We have we have to get out we have to get out of here and return another day with more people. Better armed. I expand my senses to learn its location. Roughly two hundred meters ahead of us. It is not alone. There are many monsters scattered all across the temple. And I can feel it. Both happiness and despair fill my heart. I can tell for certain that my brothers are here too. Oh. Hmm. Hold on! Hold on, please! I did it again! I did it again! I pursued my selfish goals with disregard for another person's life! Why, Burry, you stupid fuck? Why? <sighs> Keep your eyes open! Stay awake! He heaves and wails in pain. His eyes are losing their focus. And then he slowly grows limp in my arms. No! No! I kick the heavy metal door behind me and drop on the floor, putting my unconscious companion down. There's a lot of blood. He is gravely hurt. I drop his severed arm and- Oh, God. I drop his severed arm in the pool of blood and fasten a piece of cloth around the leaking stump. I may be too late. He already He's already bled too much. It is all my fault. I should have discouraged him from going any further. We should have gone back to Morzeburg and hired some help. I did not want anyone else to hunt my brothers down like some common monsters. I wanted to deal with them on, with my own two hands. They assaulted us, and while we were able to fight off one or two at a time, my companion was bitten. Gus tore his whole forearm off, and I almost, lo almost lost my life in order to retrieve it. Now I sit in this dark, cold room with my knees dipped in the puddle of his blood. I managed to absorb and keep hold of a single charge of Saurian mana. But it is going. But is it going to be enough to save his life? I know how to use a regenerative power, after all. I used it to heal the subjects of our experiments so they could not escape us even in death. But this is different. I know my limits, and this is more than I can handle. My mind is not in the right place, either. I need to... I need clarity for an operation like that, and yet I'm overwhelmed with emotions. All my life has been hell, and I inflicted hell on others. I was ready to finally forsake myself and join my brothers. But through the past week, I have finally experienced something new. Hope? And what? I do not know, and it does not matter anymore. In my endless mindlessness, I broke the vessel of that hope, and now I watch it bleed dry. It was my last and only spark of the unexpected in my life. Once he is gone, this is the true end for me, too. I look down at the puddle of blood. I cannot ignore its smell. It is different from the blood of any species I know, and it is rich with his mana. Before he dies, and before my own eternal punishment engulfs me, I need to know... I bring my mouth to the floor to the glister to the glistening crimson. I part my lips and I almost forget about the I almost forget about the turret and the cables. It feels like I'm living through these events again. I really have one of the lowest points in our respective lives, this time from his perspective. No matter how much we strove to better ourselves or how hard we clung to the brief moments of happiness, despair was ever present. It patiently waited for those moments of weakness to let itself be known again. Okay, now, water time. All right, guys and gals, and we are back. Okay, that must be true for every dog in shelter. I can feel it all. I can feel it all in those shards of experience flowing through me. None of them is completely free of grief. Knowing that, why should they keep trying? Why should I not just give up right now? Why? Why? Why can I not do this? I part my lips and I stop. I've dedicated my life to pursuing knowledge. Now I know I could bring myself closer to the truth if only I drank this. No harm in that. It has already been spilled, after all. So why am I hesitating? I see my reflection in it. I look so pathetic. Is that what he saw in me when we first met? Was he trying to wipe my tears with his hand this t that time? Now, there is no one to wipe them. 
They dripped down my snout and mixed with the blood. I wonder if he could still do the same if he knew how bad of a dog I was. I grab his severed arm and stick it back to its stump. I take a few deep breaths, trying my best to clear my mind. I cannot do this. I do not have enough mana. This is impossible. Impossible. But I have to try. I need to hear. I need to. I need him to hear everything. I do not want to be forgiven. I only want him to know the truth about myself. I need him to listen. So I start telling him everything. I tell him about my brothers. I share with him all the most awful details of my past sins. I spill my heart to him, from the regrets of my childhood years to the most insane gruesomeness of my adult life. I do not hide anything, every single thought that has been weighing on my conscience is for him to hear. But just as my words spill from my mouth, so does the blood from his body. The flesh does not bend fast enough. The clotted blood liquefies again under my magic, but there are too many severed, but there are too many severed, ner severed veins and nerves for me to comprehend and connect at once. But the sparks of his life and the remnants of the Saurian mana within me are slowly dying out. Like candles running out of wick. Soon it will be over. But at the very least, I managed to say my piece before the curtain was closed, right? Wrong. Who cares how I feel about my past? I'm not going to help anyone by showing how sorry I am. I do not need to be right or good. I do not need to seek punishment either. I do not need to be anything at all. With every life lost in the pursuit of the truth, I only strayed further away from it. Now I see it so clearly, the reason why it has always eluded me just outside arm's reach. If there is a truth in this world, it is not it is not to be seen in absolutes. It does not have only one form. It is the vast potential of life itself. And his own should not just should not be over just yet. Hmm. Not a blue. Thank you for saving me. Again. You are a good boy. I am not. <clears throat> if only you heard everything I told you when I was healing you. I did. I heard everything. Did you? Did you now? Then how can you still say something like that? Every boy is a good boy. Simple as that. That is blatantly untrue. He laughs. There was so much brightness in his voice. Somehow I feel too embarrassed to disagree with his nonsense. Thanks a lot. After learning more about you, I think I'm starting to understand our purpose here. Our purpose? What do you mean? You promise not to laugh? For as little weight as my word holds, I do. He smiles. He's so beautiful when he smiles. You and me, my friend, are going to take over this broken world. We're going to put it back together and save everyone, one soul at a time. Starting today, with you. He speaks nonsense yet again, and yet again he sounds serious. What does he mean? What is on his mind? Why do I feel shivers crawling down my spine as I stare into his blue eyes? That is a nice dream and all, but it will not come to fruition unless we manage to escape this place first and... Oh, we're not leaving. We're gonna do so much better. We're gonna go back there, claim this whole metal shelter as our base, and we are going to save your brothers. Do not even joke about that. I have already gone down that road. There is nothing but tragedy awaiting those who dare to oppose the world. He keeps staring at me, and only the slightest smirk lingers at the corner of his mouth. I know he is serious. He, he must know something I do not. His mana is really is different from the other six. It is exactly what I've been missing all this time. The final pieces of our reality. It was what gave me the power to reignite the final sparks of sorry and mana into something complete. A miracle. This room is still rich in his mana. I'm aware of it. I can feel it. I can finally understand it. The power that let me bring him from the brink of death. All right, I'm not actually going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our, excuse me, thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for more content as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye